Um, g'day and welcome to another episode of Water Assassin Fishing. Today, we are catching snags. We are not catching snags. <laughs> Today, we are catching something that has run pretty heavily and is seriously taking line. I'm going to have to turn around and go with this because this thing is actually fighting very similar to how a Jewfish would, fish, would um, fight. Yeah, thanks mate. I'm not going to worry about that other line. I'm just going to chase this down to get some line back on because I'm seeing backing. So in today's episode, guys, I'm going to try and land this fish. In other news, I have another little surprise that we ran into a little bit earlier that I have never seen in the basin before. So stay tuned for that. And the third thing is I'm going to attempt to cook up some lunch. And this is actually a really exciting one because the way this hit this rod and the way it's taking line is very, very close to being something that I've caught in this basin a few times. But I'm not going to call that. I'm not going to say it's a Jewfish because you don't say that. I'm only using six pound leader, sorry, four, four pound leader, six pound main line with a die or a double clutch. Pretty much that same setup you guys have watched me using for the last four weeks. And the goal is just to keep putting line back on this little Stratic 1000 with a one to three kilo rod, six foot yak, ra uh, yak raider. And this is actually very heavy. This is a very good fish. Okay. So the way this took off guys, it didn't take off like a flathead. Now it can be multiple different things. First thing it could be is a brim, but it's staying low. Second thing it could be is a tailor, but it's staying low. Third thing I'm not going to jinx it, because this is a fight that I've had before. So the goal for me right now is just to keep putting line back on this reel, which I've done. going to fight this thing for a while. As normal with these videos, I do have another line out as well, which I'm just got behind me at the moment. This fish is running away from me. If it does start to sort of spin back around, I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. But at the moment, it's sort of swimming away and it's towing me out into the basin a little bit further, which is good. Now it's below me. Now it gets interesting when you lose fish. I've got the drag set so when there's fully four pound of pressure on this setup that's when it'll take line which it's doing now and it's taking it straight down. Flathead fight up and down if for those who would like to know they're not a fish that'll take off which is what this initially did. And I've seen leader you could see this fish for the first time guys if it doesn't run again being very careful about how, oh, what is that? That is a big bronze shape in this flood water. That is a big tailor, woo! That is a big tailor. That is a great fish if I can land it. Oh, that's a heavy tailor, woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Thanks mate. So yeah, welcome to this episode, guys. Well, I was really hoping I could catch a fish. I actually pulled my calf muscle yesterday playing a bit of cricket with the lads over here. Um, and it's been very difficult pedaling this thing, but I want to get a video out to you guys because it's going to take a while before I can potentially get out again. Um, today being a Saturday. Now, Grant, just <laughs> how hard did that hit that, that rod, mate? Oh, dude, that just blew off. I nearly lost my holes full, guys, in about 10 seconds. Um, by the time I actually got to hit the camera um, after I hooked it, that did thing had nearly gone. Did you have any line left? Not much, mate. She was pretty pretty well buggered. Just going to try and get this one in. Now, guys, the basin. We... Oh, I've actually... Oh, hit that. Yeah, I've actually... This is what Taylor will do. So while that one sits there and calms down, I've got to be careful holding Taylor because they have sharp teeth and something that big will actually cut your whole finger off. 
So I'm going to be very careful. I'm just going to let it calm down. It's fine there. It's not going to um, injure the fish by staying there and calming down a little bit longer. And we're going to talk about what's going on here. So this is a little Savage Gear trout um, modelled soft plastic lure that actually has an inbuilt, um, obviously, hook on the top and a treble underneath. Um, a really good um, lure to fish the basin across the bottom. Now what Taylor do, they're a predatory fish. They don't sit in ambush. They swim around and they basically, their whole point that they catch their food on is I'll come in and they'll snap the back of the of a fish off. So like the tail and they'll incapacitate that fish. So you can picture this being like a little mullet or a whiting or even a little tailor. It'll come in and it'll quickly snap that off because they're very fast. And once that fish has no tail, obviously it can't do much. And, and that's when the tail will come back and it'll have a second go and it'll usually um, chomp the rest of that fish off. So that other rod has actually had a hit on it and I'm gonna to have to replace that a little bit later. But while I am obviously here, I'm gonna to talk to you about this tailor. Now, I didn't actually mention tailor at all when I was sort of fighting this fish and I should have. And this is a really big specimen of a tailor. So tailor actually aren't the best eating. So it's not something that I'm going to keep. I'm going to remove it from this hook. So guys, big teeth on it. It's hard to show you guys. I'm, I'm actually worried because if I drop this and it falls near my toe, I'm gonna, and it grabs that toe, I've lost it. And these things are just notorious for wrecking your lures. Anyway, see if I can hold it up for you guys. It's like that. Good photo. I'll try and get Grant for a bit of a photo of this thing too with his GoPro, with his phone, I mean. But um, you can see this is a solid little, little tailor. This thing actually just, yeah, is built for speed. Get tailor back in the water. I hold him under the fin. Back he goes, just like that. <sighs> bit of excitement. What do you reckon, Grant? Yeah, it was pretty good to actually see you catch a fish for a change. <laughs> big out here guys and we're not sure what it is and it kind of looks like fins you made a bull shark dude i don't think that's dead i think that's alive doesn't look too crash hot whatever it is mate it was, well, it up was it yep. is, is it a whale Sure, it's a seal. Look at me, I'm more worried about getting my um, snag off my reel than the big bloody carcass of whatever this is here. Seal, guys, we've got a looks like a seal that passed away or on its last legs. So we're gonna bring the. I'm gonna see if it's alright because that's what we've got to do. Our job as humans to make sure our fellow. Animals are good, yeah mate, it looks a bit sick if it's alive, I don't want it to jump on the kayak either and sink me because that's massive. Yeah, she's she's a bit bit sick, buddy. There it goes there. It's gotta make sure it doesn't jump on your kayak and sink you. Yeah, I know they're good at that. Drawing us into a false sense of security and then Straight on the back of the yak. How good's that, guys? I don't think it was that sick. I think it was just playing on top. Probably trying to uh, attract us in. Grant's kayak looks a bit tasty there today. You see a lot of things in the basin, don't you? Seals, whales. Ha <laughs> ha! Joking. Water assassins. And then watch what happens if I steer right and just go straight into him. No, he's, not, he's more scared of me than the bloody seal that just tried to... Good spotting though, mate. You saw that from a mile away. Yeah, I do have eyes on my feet. <laughs> Listen to it. Oh, well, guys, so there you go. Well, I'm, I'm going to trawl because, let's be honest, those guys have pretty good eyesight underwater. It's very rocky. Um, as mentioned before, we've had an absolute ton of rain. It's actually 50% of the total annual average amount of rain for this area fell over 24 hours the other day and it's just lifted the basin about a metre and a half. As you can see, I'm coming up on all these cockle shells here and there's no sand. That's what I was trying to say. I'm 
hate running the kayak obviously with the plastic up over rock so let's try and find a little bay out of the winds and also mentioned before I've actually probably um, done a bit more damage than I'm letting onto my calf I'd say probably grade two um, muscle tear which, which isn't ideal but the good thing about being in my line of work is I know how to fix that. And one of the reasons, well, one of the things that you shouldn't be doing in your first 24 hours after a muscle tear like that is hopping in and out of a kayak. So not ideal, guys, but I love being out here and it's what refreshes me for the week. Um, I'm going to find a little spot here and we'll set up this, um, this jet boil and we'll see how it goes. So what I'm doing today, guys, is trying to firstly avoid the ants that are everywhere on this island here at the moment, in amongst these cockle shells. Um, and I also thought I'd just do a bit of a, a lunch to test drive my gear before I put it through some of the things that I'm gonna absolutely need it for when I'm doing some of my overnighters. So what I've got in this bag of tricks, it's actually a June bag, June four by four bag that I got from Anaconda. Got it on sale for about $30. Um, it's an esky bag and it's actually perfect for the kayak because it's not a big square box that you've got to find room for when you're only going to have a few things in it. You can zip it up and just have minimal stuff if you really want to. Obviously I've got the little butane cylinder. I think this one is built by Profuel. What I've also got today, trusty little pan. This is just a little stainless steel thing that you get for about $15. Um, I use it in a campfire mostly but yeah, as you can see, can't find mostly, but I've only had it on one or two trips. Um, I usually have that that circle pot that you've seen me use a hundred times. The reason I'm not bringing that one out is because with the old stove that I used to have, the head of it was like this big, so it was like a like a jet burner sort of thing, and it would burn one little spot. And with that big circle pot that you guys have seen me use a million times. If I was using it anywhere except for the campfire, if I was using it on that hiking stove, it'd just burn like one little spot in the middle of the, the pan and it's gotten thin and a bit crap over time. So I've re I'm replacing that. Uh, I'm just going to pull out this board here. The whole purpose of having that out is because I'm going to try and make a flatter surface for this to sit on. Just got to be careful when you're touching things in salt water, guys, like shells, because there's little crustaceans and blue ring octopus and things that can kill you living in those. Okay, what else have we got? We've got the jet boil system, which is what we're basically gonna do a little bit of a, I'm not gonna call it a review because I haven't used it much today. It'll just be like a bit of a test drive. So we'll call it a preview of that. I was gonna do an unbo on, unboxing of that, but um, there's, you guys don't need to see me unwrap something in a bit of cardboard. So I'm gonna explain, you know, a little bit about what it came in and um, you know, if I rate that product after I use it for the first time. And I'm gonna sort of talk you through what I'm gonna be having for lunch. Um, it's a very simple scotch fillet steak. So not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I, I'm a massive steak fan. Like I was brought up on a farm, um, love beef to death, but I feel like although scotch fillet is, you know, often regarded as the best cut, um, and it is, it's, you know, full of that nice marbling of, of fat. I, I'm a big fan of a porterhouse steak myself, and a T-bone's my second to that. And then Scotch fillet is number three. But I still love it, and beef has actually got a little bit cheaper. Australia are about to hit another drought, unfortunately. Um, so the cost of beef has come down as a lot of the farmers are having to sell off uh, before that drought hits a lot of their, you know, their stock and that sort of thing. So unfortunately for our farmers, price of beef has come down, um, and it will actually go up in price as the drought goes on. So I'm gonna take advantage of that while I can, and and buy that steak um, obviously you know for those at home at the moment um, they're all cutting up their own stock they're all cutting up their own beef so they're getting the butchers to, to do that for them but I'm about five hours from home where I live here so I've got to buy my steak what else have we got I've got a rub so this is just a simple um, rub some butt can't believe I said that aloud rub some butt slap some on apparently um, it's a uh, mustard, vinegar, and spice mix. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on the steak. And I've also got a solo, hard solo. Um, not for the kids, that one, but very nice. So I'm gonna cheese you guys right now. 
big thank you to everyone who does watch my videos before I start cooking wanted to give a shout out today to CJ and Jace um, both members of the club or Jace is a member of the club CJ is a little bit young at the moment but has been watching my videos and just mentioned it the other day to me that they yeah sort of watch a lot of, all the time in fact so um, CJ is smashing some fish at the moment and looking forward to um, hearing more about your adventures out there mate so today's video is dedicated to you guys thanks for watching cheers Um, I'm going to have to drink that before the ants get to it, which are already crawling all over me. So I've also got oil in my little oil cat container. I keep things very simple. This was an old uh, vanilla essence container and essentially it is now, due to beautiful wife's thinking, a um, very good little handy oil container. Okay, that gets us to the jet boil. Let's uh, start some of this. Now, what did it come in? The jet boil, um, it's called, this one's called the jet boil flash. So there's different sizes of the pot that it comes on. Um, I don't need anything massive because let's be honest, this isn't my main takeaway, the flask. Um, I'm gonna be using it without that the majority of the time. What I like about it though, is it makes that big kettle that I have to bring when I am trying to heat water up redundant. So I don't have to bring that, that big thing when I go with it somewhere. So I'm gonna save space there and it's gonna be able to, like everything I need, it's gonna be packed into that flask. So this is more of a storage container for me and secondary to that, um, something that I can heat water up in. So what it came in was a um, cardboard box. In it was instructions, the flask, um, all, everything you see is how it came in the box, except for in it, I've put a spoon and I've put um, a pot stove holder that I had to buy separately, which I'll explain in a second. Um, it also came with a sticker and that's pretty much it so i'm not going to bring all that stuff with me to unbox it for you guys i'm going to take the lid off put it in my little um container there obviously i've got a little fold up spoon you guys have watched me use this a million times this is an ebay job probably i think a dollar fifty cost me and just folds up really nicely and, you know keep it simple stupid is the best method i find when i'm going camping came with a stove holder so that's going to hold that stove nice and flat um, and I'm still going to use that, that bread board just to elevate it a little bit for you guys. Okay, so other than that, I'm going to go to the next thing is I've got spiders biting me everywhere. Little spiders, don't know what they are. I think they're a couple of little huntsmen's hanging around. Um, this is the pot stove. Okay, pot stove holder I should say. So this allows me to use a, a pot or a pan on the jet boil. And basically these feet just they come pre sort of folded up like that and you just got to unfold it so that you can put a pot on it um, really handy already guys I've already noticed how big and spacious that is compared to the three prongs that I usually have to use when I've got my old um, stove so that's a massive improvement there I'm just gonna put that aside for now and then inside this container we have the actual jet boil burner so that's this bad boy just here um, basically I'm going to show you how that works in a second but attached to that is just a bit of a um, looks to be like a instruction manual and like a warning thing on how to use it and best practice and that sort of stuff so what I'm going to do is take you oh got one more thing it does come with this cup here so the cup is actually designed to um, make sure that you're not getting like this all broken here which is the you know the fast burner bit on the bottom of the flask um, so I'm going to keep that on there for now because I'm not actually going to use this flask at all. So the flask is going to stay away because it's not part of the review today. Today it's just purely based on this jet boil system here. Now already the head is a lot bigger, probably four times larger than the one I, I was using before um, that you've seen in all my videos. So that's going to make a bigger um, spot that I can cook on rather than that little heat spot that I, I was using before. It's also probably about double the size of that 360 burner that I was originally gonna buy at BCF um, before I found this one. Okay, so let's start it very simply, right? Let's let's get the let's get this thing firing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take that little lid off the fuel canister. I'm gonna put the pot support on top of the jet boil system 
it does sort of semi lock in place so when you put it on it goes in the grooves you guys can't see that um, right there but basically it goes in the grooves and then you can spin it and it won't lock on completely but it'll lock on enough that you can sort of you know put it upside down it's not going to fall down off so perfect um, now what you do it's like any um, sort of system that you'd use for a hiking stove just gonna roll this over the top of it right and it's gonna push into that canister just like so screwing it all the way on which it does and that fits perfectly now I've got to say something straight off the bat when you're buying those eBay stoves you have got to be very careful because a lot of the times the screw on part of it isn't the best and again I'm not gonna say what happened on the last video but it could have ended very badly with the oxidization in the middle of it um, what I'm trying to say to you guys is make sure when you spin it on you've got it nice and tight so there's no gas leaks that can happen out either side of it okay now that's on there you've got a on the back of it this little wire thing that's attached to the warning single symbol so what you do with that is you're just going to spin that that's going to release the gas out of it like any normal hiking stove as you guys can hear and then it's just got a little piazzo um, button that you can press to ignite it just like that it's burning very hot i must say there's not even a blue flame there guys like that is literally the hottest thing i've ever seen apart from beautiful wife um, and as i let that burn for a little bit i'm just going to get some things ready the first thing i'm going to do because of how hot that is burning I am going to twist this around a little bit so I have better access to the to control the heat that's coming out of that it's gonna add a little bit of oil to my pot Spins the bottom as you guys can see not too much but enough that I want to coat it a fair bit obviously I'm cooking a beautiful steak so yeah I'm not not gonna take um, a little bit of oil for granted I'm going to use this a, a fair bit it's going to move that around in the pot a little bit without losing it like that and I'm just going to sit it on top of that burner like so and just letting that heat up now uh, that's not going to take too long Jeff Boyle have a very strong name in the industry as having one of the or actually the fastest uh, boiling uh, point with their stove systems so the way it's set up I think you can actually go from water that's sort of room temperature to boiling within like a minute or two it's that quick and I can already see just there how quickly that um, that pan there is heating up so what I've done while I've been talking guys is I've just undone the plastic on top of this scotch and I'm just going to throw some of this rub on top of it just sort of semi generous but not too much I'm just going to rub it in okay it's a nice thick piece of scotch as well so it's even better I do like it it's weird I'm, I'm very particular with my steak I like it rare and bordering on blue and if I had to choose between medium rare or blue I would go blue every day of the week So I've got to say guys, one thing I, I do, I mentioned a little bit earlier, I love to keep things simple. So I'm not a, I'm not a, someone who goes out and spends a lot of money on this kind of gear when I'm going um, fishing or camping. I like to keep it as simple as possible and leave no trace. That's another thing I'm big on. Um, there's nothing worse than going to a campsite or somewhere that you think is going to be a little bit remote and you can sort of feel like you're the first person there and you get there and you just see like yeah, beer bottles and plastic and stuff laying everywhere um, I know it's not for everyone but I do wish more people would get out and do this kind of camping because it would mean you know there's better areas for everyone moving down the track and that's why I like to get to places I guess you can't really get a car or a U2 because yeah then most people if they're gonna bring that stuff would have to walk it in and let's be honest people are lazy so that's why I like to go kayak camping because I get into these little spots like this where most people can't get to and you just know that you're going to have the place to yourself and it's as long as you take everything that you um, used out of it it's going to be perfect for the next person as well 
Okay, so this pan is definitely hot enough. Little trick is to, oh, this is a great piece of steak, is to bring the pan to you so you don't drop it. So I'm just gonna slide that on, just like so. You can see the steak just there, guys. Uh, we're gonna have a look at that, guys. It's starting to cook really well. I'm gonna flip it over, put the other side. I've let this sort of sit for 10 minutes, just letting the juices soak back up into the steak. I'm gonna pick this steak up and eat it with my hands. Obviously, I'm not in a fancy restaurant today. I'm just gonna break it into two, throw the big piece back. Medium rare, guys. That's medium rare. So, I've actually cooked that better than I thought I was actually gonna be able to do it on a hiking stove that I've never used before. Alright guys, I'm just sitting here in my nook, just had my lunch, just chilling for a little bit on this island. So I want to give a big shout out to you guys. The other reason I do this stuff, um, it's it's weird because normally I'd go out and I'd have a fish and I'd go back home or I'd go out and I'd, I'd do a catch and cook, you know, catch a bit of lunch because I was hungry and I might have caught a flathead. But today, I've never thought to go and just cook a steak on the island. Like that's something I could do at home. But because I've got a YouTube channel and because people have asked me to do it, I'm out here on an island just chilling, like living, literally living my best life, you know, on an island cooking a steak with a hiking stove. It's it's insane. Um, but, and this is the reason I'm doing that because you guys actually want me to do that. So big thank you to everyone who comes along on these journeys with me, my long suffering subscribers for getting this far through these videos. A um, bit of analytics for you, 60% of my viewers are from Australia, 40% are not from Australia, and I think it's like 8 point something percent are from the US, so big shout out to my US viewers, um, I know you guys are dealing with bears and cougars and God knows what else big things you got to deal with when you're fishing, we in Australia, our, our things are insects and a funnel web spider that's probably within a foot of where I'm at the moment most dangerous spider in the world we've got eastern browns here which is a snake that's the second most dangerous snake in the world um the first being the inland taipan which we've also got in australia um it's it's weird you know we we just both of what we do i watch your videos over there and i can't believe you guys have got to carry a gun with you to go fishing just in case like you know a bear comes out at you or something like that here where you know we're very privileged to not have to worry about that stuff. Um, and just want to say a big thank you to the questions I get too. Like I get asked a lot of questions, mainly through my Instagram page. I think it's because those questions, people probably feel a bit dumb asking, but ask them in the comments section, guys. Um, I had one person the other day ask about my hat, like where I got my hat from. Um, what else have I got? Like why I cut sleeves off my shirt? What kind of sunscreen I use? Like just stuff like that. Um, and I, I'd like to do a video where I actually go through and I answer all those questions, like just the random ones, like the fun ones to answer. Because I feel like I do yabber on a little bit about like fishing and what kind of lures to use for the basin and all that sort of stuff. But if I've got like a lot of you guys coming from the US, you're probably never going to come here anyway. And you're probably not going to fish a lot of these Australian waters, so I don't have to talk about fishing all the time. Um, I am going to answer the hat one because that's one I've had a few times it's popped up. Um, this is an Akubra. In Australia, it is probably the most famous brand of, you know, I guess you'd call it Western hat. It's probably the best description of what these hats are. And Akubra is an Australian product that was developed many years ago during the Great Depression. Um, there was a lot of rabbits through um, Australia and a lot of, you know, farmers and different people would actually get paid per rabbit pelt that they would cat, uh, catch. Um, yeah, both my grandparents, uh, or grandpas were, you know, born in that Great Depression era on the farms and they would go out and they'd actually get paid to trap their own rabbits and that sort of thing. And the reason I'm bringing these rabbits are up is because that's what the hat's made of. It's, it's actually a pelt um, that's been, I guess, um, the rabbit fur has been sort of crushed down to make a, um, a felt and that felt is what, how the hat's made. So for that reason, 
uh, the Akuba has been a part of the Australian, I guess, folklore for, for many years. And um, it's, it's so important when you're spending this much time out in the sun like we do in Australia in particular to, to make sure that you're covering your whole head. And that's why I sort of fold it down at the back a fair bit when you see me fishing because I like to cover the back of the neck. Same with this, um, yeah, with this sort of collar on my shirt. And you guys are laughing right now because you're thinking you're talking about, you know, sun protection, etc., with a hat and you've cut your sleeves off your shirt. So must admit, guys, not the smartest option. Um, reason I, I do that is, is one, I like to show off my guns. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, this shirt is made by Mad Hueys, and I'm going to give them a shout out because I do love this shirt. The only one downside side that I didn't like about the shirt was that it didn't have like those vents underneath the arms. So it's like, it's got a massive vent on the back and I love it to death for that reason, but it just didn't have that arm one. So I found that like under the arms, I'd sweat a lot and it, it sucks. So um, I use this one for mainly fishing in, in winter time and I cut the sleeves off and, and that reason I can sort of not have to worry as much about the sun. But as you can tell by the glistening beauty of the skin that I've got going on at the moment, that's a joke. That's sunscreen covered in sunscreen. So um, that's, yeah, basically I'm covered head to toe in sunscreen. That's what I try and do. But I just wanted to go away from talking about my shoulders and my arms and the sun and I wanted to give you guys a massive shout and say thank you so much for watching this channel. And I cannot wait until I can get to 500 subscribers and say that I actually made it on YouTube. Because once I get to 500, I think I get like paid or something per view. So that would be that would be fantastic. Um, but thank you for liking and subscribing. And if you do have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you on our next adventure.